From 1938 to 1939, Nazi Germany invaded territories of Austria and Poland, which marked the beginning of the Second World War. Hitler annexed both countries at a time when Nazi Germany planned on expanding its territories to other parts of Europe by attacking and invading them. But why exactly did Hitler choose to attack and conquer these two nations first? Hang on, as we explore Hitler's motives for launching his planned domination of Europe with an attack on these two nations, who share a common heritage and history. But before we get right into it, kindly support this channel by giving the video a like, hitting the subscribe button and smashing the notification bell to receive notifications of when we post more enthralling historical videos like this one. Do leave us a comment as well. We would love to read your opinions on Hitler's very brutal war against all of Europe. Ready? Let's get straight to it. On the 1st of July 1936, a group of pro-Nazi officials tried to overthrow the Austrian government through an organized coup. The coup was organized with Hitler's approval and with the assistance of top German officials. The coup didn't go as planned as the Austrian army didn't support it as Hitler had hoped. The coup, however, did succeed in toppling Austria's chancellor at the time, and Nazi soldiers likewise did succeed in seeing to his assassination. On February 12, 1938, Hitler arranged a meeting with the newly appointed Austrian Chancellor Kurt von Schuschnigg, who was appointed after his predecessor's assassination. Hitler ordered the Austrian Chancellor to appoint members of Austria's Nazi party to his cabinet and give full political rights to the party or face the risk of an invasion by German forces. This development led the Austrian Chancellor to call for a national vote to determine the fate of Austria. The vote was centered on whether the Austrians wished their nation to remain independent or fall under the rule of the Third Reich. The move by von Schuschnigg to organize a vote infuriated Hitler and prompted him to invade Austria. Von Schuschnigg got word of the impending invasion and was aware of the impending invasion and quickly resigned, thereby cancelling the planned votes and avoiding unnecessary bloodshed. Hitler then requested the Austrian president Wilhelm Miklas to appoint an Austrian member of the Nazi party as the nation's next chancellor. But Miklas would decline the Führer's proposition and this prompted Hitler to invade Austria the very next day. Hitler would ultimately have his wish, eventually seeing to the emergence of an Austrian member of the Nazi party as the country's chancellor. On March 12, 1938, German forces entered Austria's territory and encountered no resistance from the Austrians. Hitler justified the invasion of Austria by claiming that the country had descended into chaos. German newspapers printed a phony telegram from the new Austrian Chancellor saying that the German invasion was necessary to restore order. Austria's parliament formally approved the annexation and Austria was no longer considered an independent nation, but rather an occupied region of Nazi Germany. Following the successful annexation of Austria, Hitler set his eyes next on Poland and on September 17, 1939, Nazi forces successfully invaded Poland on the pretext that ethnic Germans living in Poland were being persecuted by the Polish. Hitler also claimed that the country was scheming with British and French allies to encircle and invade Germany. Hitler employed various tactics to plan the invasion of Poland, but there was one that stood out. This involved Nazi SS soldiers, Hitler's elite private bodyguards staging a phony attack on a German radio station and falsely accusing the Polish people of this attack. For Hitler, Germany needed to invade Poland as it was the door to more territories in Eastern Europe. Also, in invading Poland, Nazi forces colluded with the Soviet army to encircle the Polish army by sending troops in from all directions. Over 2,000 tanks and 1,000 planes were used to advance on the city of Warsaw. The Polish army made multiple miscalculations in predicting the enemy's move. The Polish army was one million man strong, but they were severely under-equipped compared to the German forces they were up against. The Polish forces attempted to take the Germans head-on, rather than fall back and strategize their defensive positions. This poor military strategy, as well as their outdated weapons, made the Polish army no match for their German counterparts, who had modern and mechanized battle machines. Germany had 3,600 modern armored vehicles against Poland's 750. The Germans also had twice as many airplanes as Poland. In just one week, German troops had already advanced to the outskirts of Poland's capital and had successfully captured the city. On September 3rd, both France and Britain both kept their promise to help defend Poland and declared war on Germany. 
But while France and Britain declared war against Germany for invading Poland, neither party was prepared to wage war. The Allied countries presumed that a few more months of military mobilization would put them in a better position to defeat the Nazis. But while they were preparing, Poland fell completely before Britain and France could send in troops to repel the Nazis. The Polish army was being decimated by Nazi troops and the involvement of the Soviet Union also made the situation dire for the Polish. The Ribbentrop-Molotov non-aggression pact further sealed Poland's fate. Two years later, Nazi Germany would go on to invade the Soviet Union in June 1941, allowing it full control of Poland. The country would remain under German occupation until the end of the Second World War. Hitler had the belief to ensure the survival of the German race, Germany needed more living space for its citizens and as such, must necessarily expand its territory by every means possible. This was one of the fundamental ideologies that shaped Nazi beliefs and was referred to as the ideology of Lebensraum. This belief would further prompt Hitler to conceive a complete invasion of the whole of Europe. When Hitler realized that the Allied forces were forming coalitions, he perceived it as an avenue for the Allied countries to set up satellite states in regions close to Germany, which might compromise the security of the German nation. Hitler thought it strategic to strike first, and this was another core reason for his invasion of Austria and Poland two border nations that could collide with the enemy. Hitler likewise recognized that if he were to invade Poland in a bid to expand Germany's territory, the only country that could stop him from invading Poland was the Soviet Union under Stalin. The Nazi-Soviet Ribbentrop-Molotov non-aggression pact of August 23, 1939 removed these worries. With Hitler being the ruthless dictator that he was, invading Austria and Poland first helped keep his ambition of conquering all of Europe alive. Both countries were likewise easy targets for Hitler as their military lacked the military sophistication needed to repel the Nazi army. Hitler had correctly calculated that even if the Allied forces were to interfere, it wouldn't be an immediate response, and he essentially saw this as an impetus to make moves on even much smaller neighboring territories. Had Hitler not been successful in his quest to invade these two countries, there may never have been the Second World War.